I love the movie Fern Gully. To all those who want to bash this movie, I say get off your high horse. No matter how you slice it, this movie is an animated wonder. With great visuals, with an amazing work of nature and lighting, this movie is a highlight of my childhood. Which is why I hate the direct-to-video sequel in which they had nothing that the original movie had, aside from the character design and their names. Seriously, the animation in this movie is dull. Not incredibly dull, just plain dull. And that's just a minor problem with this movie. Here, I'm going to talk about the bigger problems of it. Hello, I'm Silver Zeo, and I'm here to, here to rant about Fern Gully 2, The Magical Rescue. Just to make things clear, yes, I am aware that the nostalgia critic is going to review this movie later on this week. But he panned the first movie, and this, and this, and this movie really scarred the fans of the original. Like me or Huey Lewis, who was planning to burn this film for the sake of the fans of the original but he couldn't do the technical problems, as well as the radical reviewer being to the punch. So basically, I have mustered up all my video and editing, the movie reviewing skills, to bring the fans justice to this dull movie. As far as bad sequels go, I really hate this one. While most people bash Secret of Nim 2, which they should, that movie did have some redeeming elements to it. Ferngully 2, on the other hand, does not. There's nothing about this movie that makes it stand out, good or bad. There's not one scene, character, or aspect about this movie that redeems it or even give it a reason to hate. It's just bland. So bland that it's just a bore just to go over the entire movie in summary. Instead, I'm going to list the biggest problems of this movie that the fans of the original most likely have with it as they are the ones with the most pain from this movie, as they are the ones with the actual hopes of a good sequel. I'm still a newbie at video editing, so I can't really show any clips of this movie. Well, not at all, because Fox apparently took down all the videos of this movie off of YouTube and leaving the original out. How does this stuff happen again? Who's in charge up there? <laughs> Okay, before I waste more airtime, let me waste your time with this cheap countdown rant. Enjoy, as this is my top six reason why Fern Gully fans hate the magical rescue. Why top six? Well, because that's all I can manage to find in this movie. Enjoy! Number six, the voice acting. Not one of the original actors from the original movie, I'm using the word original here because I refuse to accept this Dolphus as an actual sequel to it, are in this movie. It says on Wikipedia and uh, an international movie database that Tone Lock reprises his role as that lizard, but I suspect that to be faked, and so far all the actors in this movie cannot act. Every line in this movie is bland and duller than room temperature water. They convey emotion as well as a pod person can. All in all, the acting in this movie matches the movie's overall animation. Bland and forgettable. Number 5 baddies acting. This may be redundant, but trust me, this voice actor tops them all. To all those who say Robin Williams is a bad actor, behold this guy's attempt to follow suit. I don't even know who to compare him to. I could say Tommy Wiseau, but at least Tommy Wiseau had some originality in his work. Imagine baddies voice actor has had yet to work who does an impression of Jim Carrey, doing an impression of Adam Sandler, who's doing an impression of Robin Williams. That's basically Batty 2 in Brunkle 2. While all the other actors may be dull, Batty's voice actor is both dull and annoying. Number four, the villains. You know how in most of the Disney directed DVD sequels, they usually have the villain, or at least someone relating to the villain, come back and get revenge? That doesn't happen here. In this movie, replacing the evil death god Hexus, played by Tim Curry, we get some poachers played by really no one. We have a big chin guy who's basically an unimpressive cliche outback villain, and the other is a short, stupid, fat guy who can't even buckle his own seatbelt. Even Abyss Maul from Milan is a worse threat than these guys. I know it's hard to tell up a god of destruction, but at least we could have had something more than just cheap Captain Planet villains without the star power. Number three, the title, The Magical Rescue. Guess what kind of magic they use? And it's not the magical power of love, it's the power of growing a tree! You know, like in the first movie, only without the awe-inspiring lights, music, and the overall awesome animation. That's right, this movie ends exactly like the original movie, only done on a cheaper budget. Krista basically grows a tree that just lifts the bad guys off the ground. 
and that's pretty much all the magic this rescue has. And you think that was a letdown? Wait till I actually get to the rescue part of this movie. Number two, Krista's barely in this movie. This is a mix to me as the actress playing Krista in this movie can't act at all. But this does count as a strike against the original movie as she doesn't really do anything following from what she learned from the first movie, or at least do anything different aside from doing nothing. This movie focuses more on some of the other characters, namely Pips and those bug baker fairies. They never really did explain what they are in the first movie, and you think since this movie focuses more on them, they would answer some of the questions about them. But they don't. Basically, they journey out of Ferngully to save kidnapped baby animals, but then they get mostly sidetracked by a circus and TV. I know those two things are considered strange and unique to them, but they're on a rescue mission for baby animals who may get killed. I'm not one to talk, as I put off important things for some random stuff on the internet, but it's just basically a cheap writer's convenience to pan off the movie. This would have worked if they explore more of the elements of the human city, basically like a role reversal of Zack than the original movie, but no, in the end, it's just Penny. Chris it does come through in the end, but only at the climax due to writer's convenience again. Basically, they just put her on her side for the sidelines, and then just bring her back in when they really need her. I think the only reason why they kept her in this movie is to keep the fans happy. But you know what? We're not. And now, the number one reason why Ferngully fans hate the magical rescue. It's basically this one point of the film where Krista reassures her father that not all humans have forgotten about Ferngully. The problem here? She doesn't say anyone's name in particular, namely Zack's. This was really odd to me. When a main character from the first movie doesn't make an appearance in the sequel, they usually just make a small reference to him in a line of dialogue and leave it at that. But here, there's not one single reference to Zack at all. It's almost like the people who made this sequel didn't obtain the right to do so. And to add salt onto this wound, out of the blue, comes this guy. It's one of the, guy it's one of the characters from the first movie who looks like Lenny from The Simpsons. Basically, the, one of the drivers of the tree eater, Ralph. That's right, Ralph. One of the minor humans from the original movie is the only human who comes back in the sequel and has lines. While Zack is pretty much forgotten like Spider-Man's marriage from after one more day. And the real kicker is, that's not really Ralph. The guy here has an Australian accent, while in the original movie, Ralph had a slight Brooklyn accent. So the only human character from the original movie who comes back for the sequel isn't the character from the original movie at all. Was the sequel just really lazy for character design so they just stole from the original movie? And when you think about it, this character in particular is pretty much the embodiment of the sequel to, to compare to the original movie. They both look the same, but when it comes right down to it, they're both completely different. And that was my countdown of why Ferngully fans hate the Magical Rescue. As a sequel, it fails as it never really does anything on par of the original movie. And by excluding Zack from this entirely... They just basically put a skewer on trying to continue the story from the original movie. And by itself, this movie has really nothing worth remembering. Which is pretty much ironic because that's probably the only thing you'll remember about this film. Now let's see if the Nostalgia Critic will touch up on any of these things I just went over. Considering that he isn't a fan of the original movie and most likely to skim over them. This is Silver Zio. Peace out.